Well, good morning, Bridgeway Church. It is uh, such a delight to uh, be worshiping with you and to uh, join you in saying, here's my heart, Lord. Speak, Lord. And uh, what, a, what a gift it is to, uh, for us to be able to come together and to delight in the Lord and to be stirred up in, uh, in our walk with Christ. My name is Bob Johnson, Pastor Bob Johnson. I uh, retired after 40 years of uh, pastoral ministry in New York State, as well as also in Minnesota, and it's been my privilege to uh, be here at Bridgeway Church these last four years and every once in a while to have an opportunity to preach. I uh, appreciate Pastor Joel and the staff saying, uh, Pastor Bob, how, how about you do one of the uh, messages in the Summer Melt series? I said, you bet, I, I would love it, I would love it. So it's a delight to be here with you. And I'd like you to uh, stand right now with me, and we're uh, going to read Scripture. And as we read it, let me just remind you, the Beatitudes, these eight Beatitudes, are, are the kingdom values, kingdom core values. And for us who believe today, they're our core values, right? Our core values of what it is to live for Jesus Christ. So would you join me and uh, say it passionately as we uh, read the Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, as well as we're uh, going to read from verse 44 as well. Ready? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Before you're seated, let's pray together. God, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for your call and your instructions to those who believe. Transform us. You know our hearts, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak in these moments together. Holy Spirit, have your way in us. Convict and challenge us this day. We pray this in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, last week, Pastor Joseph spoke on blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Joseph, I was blessed. I was challenged. Weren't you? It was amazing. Yes. Praise the Lord. And he reminded us to not shrink back, to not be quiet. And to be bold, for the Lord is with us. That was his challenge to us. This is part two to the eighth beatitude today. And interestingly enough, in this eighth beatitude, Jesus expands it or uh, gives a little more elaboration of instruction after these eight beatitudes that really encompass all the Beatitudes when he says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. As, as his children, as his people are living out the Beatitudes of poor in spirit and hungering and thirsting after righteousness and seeking to be peacemakers and merciful and meek, they're going to be persecuted, says Jesus. But rejoice and be glad. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Re rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. These words obviously 
were so important to the church. And Jesus was speaking them because he knew what was going to happen. Obviously, he knew what was going to happen to him with his death on a cross. But he knew the persecution and the intensity that would come to those who followed him. And he shared these words. My focus this morning is concerning the increasing levels of persecution of believers around the world. And the the title of my message is Courageous Christians Living in Frightening Times. Now, here's a question for you. How many of you, when you were getting dressed to come to church this morning, maybe when you were brushing your teeth, how many of you thought to yourself, I might die today as I gather with the Bridgeway family? I I, I might get, uh, have people throw rocks at me. I, I might be arrested. By, by gathering with the Bridgeway family. I, I would say that I doubt that any of us thought of that. You know, I, I've been uh, going regularly to church for over 50 years, and never on a Sunday morning did, did I ever, you know, make my way to church and think, today I might die. Today I might die. But that's the way it is for many Christians and a lot of different places of the world. And I'm, I'm thankful that uh, Bridgeway has had the, the vision in the midst of uh, attacks on churches in these last few years that we have a wonderful ministry with guys wearing red and black shirts like, like Mark who are on the security team. How, how thankful that, that they're here to uh, help us if there's any kind of incident here in the church. I'm thankful for the uniformed officer who's parked Outside, uh, you know, that, that is a good thing and a helpful thing for us. But why don't you join me in thanking our security team who's here. Thanks, Mark. But there's a level of intensity of persecution around the world that is beyond our grasping, beyond our imagination. And that's what I'd like to really focus on this morning. Now, as you came in this morning, I see a lot of you have a note sheet, and so you can uh, follow along with me and, uh, and write some notes on that sheet. How many countries are there in the world? Little quiz. How many countries are there in the world? I mean, looks like a lot of countries, right? 195 countries are in the world. Question number two, how many countries in the world make life difficult for Christians? Don't put up the next slide yet. Take a guess. 195 countries in the world. How many countries in the world make life difficult for believers? Anybody want to yell out a number? 125? Is that what's 150? 190. Yeah. Great guesses. It's 144. 144. So all of those of you who are mass specialists, 195, 144, what is it? 51 countries where there's not intense kinds of um, persecution. Frightening, isn't it? Scary to think about. And actually, again, it's kind of beyond our grasp to know because we're, we're not a part of the uh, 144. There is a group of, uh, there's a group of people uh, who are researchers, people who are on the ground studying uh, what's happening to persecuted Christians around the world. And they've created a, a World Watch list. And uh, the yellow, oh, let's see, there it is. Yellow, that, that would be Russia, and uh, that's high persecution. The, uh, the tan uh, here, China, uh, they say Mexico, Mexico uh, because the drug cartels uh, really are, uh, uh, do not want the Christians around and doing what they're doing. Uh, but the, uh, these countries they are very high in persecution, 
and then the orange uh, India, parts of India, not all of India, but parts of India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Libya, you know, these are countries where there is intense persecution. And the number one leader of intense persecution is right here, and that is North Korea. They've been creating this list for uh, 18 years, and for all 18 years, North Korea has been number one in the persecution of Christians. They, they uh, estimate that there are over 50,000 Christians who are, in, uh, who are imprisoned in North Korea because of their faith. Now, on your sheet, I've put name, you know, five, but there are 10 countries that are listed as the 10 most dangerous countries for Christians to live in. And that is North Korea, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan, Sudan, Eritrea, Yemen, Iran, and India. Pakistan and Nigeria in this last year have had the, the most acts of violence against Christian people. And Islamic oppression fuels persecution in eight of the 10 countries on this 2019 Open Doors watch list. Christians are the most persecuted people in the world. Could you say that with me? Christians are the most persecuted people in the world. And how does that impact us? You know, it, uh, it's come to the forefront of many people. I, I don't know if you heard about this on the news, but last week, the U.S. State Department actually had a religious freedom summit in Washington, D.C., and they gathered together a 1,000 people from a 100 different countries to talk about religious freedom. It wasn't particularly focused just on Christian persecution. Uh, there were also, you know, there was the attack on a Muslim mosque in New Zealand. But they were talking about religious freedom all around the world. But there is certainly an awareness that Christians are the most persecuted people in the world. Well, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the numbers related to uh, persecution. You know, obviously, there's a lot of research that's gone into it, and, and um, you know, these numbers are estimated. But it's estimated that there are 245 million Christians who are living with intense High levels of persecution, 245 million. And they believe that in this last year, that number has increased by 14%. One in nine Christians experience high levels of persecution worldwide, one in nine. There were 4,136 Christians who were killed for faith-related reasons during this World Watch uh, uh, 2019 reporting reporting people reporting period and there was 1266 church buildings that were attacked during this period and again you know how to accumulate those statistics uh, but they have lots of researchers who are who are involved in this and uh, lots of people on the ground 245 million people. You and I go, that, that's a lot of people. Let me put it in a different perspective. The uh, country of Brazil has a population of about 245 million people. So to think of everybody in the country, in the country of Brazil living under intense persecution would be how you could kind of frame that number. But let me put some faces to, to Jesus' words Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. How many of you were here on Easter Sunday this year, April the 21st? Great, a lot of you. Most of you were here at church. While we were asleep and, and then uh, being ready for Easter Sunday, uh, in Sri Lanka, which they're, what, eight, nine, ten hours uh, ahead of us, there was a bombing 
uh, in Sri Lanka on April the 21st, Easter Sunday. Uh, those who are seeking to attack Christians placed bombs in three different churches, as well as three hotels. Uh, and their focus was Christians, as well as people from, from the West. 359 people died on Easter Sunday when they went to church. When we went to church, we weren't thinking at all that that might happen, and, I, and I'm sure they weren't thinking it either, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe they were wondering. And there were over 500 injured that day on Easter Sunday just because they loved Jesus and were wanting to worship him. Let me tell you another story that has gripped you know, me for the last 10 years, and that is the story of Asia Bibi. Asia Bibi was, uh, was arrested, uh, you know, about 11 years ago now. Uh, she was a farm worker, a Christian woman working in the fields, but there was a woman who was also working in the fields with her who was uh, an extremist Muslim. And uh, somehow or another, they had, you know, some kind of interaction, and that other woman accused Asia Bibi of blasphemy. Asia Bibi was uh, arrested, taken to prison. She was tried, and uh, she was accused of uh, blasphemy and sentenced to death by hanging based on just this one woman's testimony. There was the governor of that region in Pakistan, whose name was Solomon Taser, who, who spoke against what was going on and, and said that this is a, you know, an abuse and that that the uh, blasphemy law should be abandoned. And his bodyguard assassinated him, killed the governor. Meanwhile, at this conference I just told you about that was last week in Washington, D.C., that governor's son spoke. You know what he said? He said there are more than 200 other Asia Bibis languishing in prisons in Pakistan because of their faith, falsely accused of uh, blasphemy. Well, on May 7th, just this last month, 2019, because the church was praying, people were, you know, the, the, the story of Asia Bibi was all around the world. Uh, she was released from prison, and, uh, and she knew right away, her family knew, she couldn't stay there. There was a Muslim cleric who said, that uh, he would pay 500,000 rupees to anyone who killed her. She fled, and she's now in Canada, reunited with her family. But obviously, I'm sure as a believer, she's still kind of looking over her shoulder in terms of, is somebody going to try and kill her? Another picture uh, for you this morning is the story of Dr. Ken Elliott and his wife, Jocelyn. This precious couple, they're in their 80s, and uh, on January the 28th, 2016, they were dragged from their beds. Now, they have lived in uh, Burkina Faso for 44 years. He's a surgeon. And uh, Dr. Kenneth and uh, his wife, Jocelyn, they established a hospital there, 120-bed hospital. He would do 150 surgeries every month. Meanwhile, on January the 28th, they're dragged from their beds um, because of the fact that they're believers. And they're, they're dragged from their beds. Jocelyn is held by the captives by, for three weeks, but they kept Kenneth. And that was three and a half years ago. And... Um, this is a picture of him one year after being kidnapped, obviously looking exhausted and saddened. This is a part of a video that the, uh, that the terrorists uh, sent. Meanwhile, uh, you know, Jocelyn and, and her family are, are there, there's a website, that's how I, or a, a Facebook page where I've been able to, you know, keep hearing updates uh, she, she wrote uh, or spoke to the captors of her husband uh, just this last month in a video. Let me just read 
you a little bit from her, from her words. To those who hold my husband, Dr. Kenneth Elliott, may peace be with you and your families. I have realized for some time now that you control the future of my husband and our last years together. You have the power to show kindness and release my husband, to do good for you now in your family and my family as well. I would like to thank you for the care that you're bringing to my husband in his stay with you. What gracious words. What gracious words. My husband Kenneth now is an old man, and he is in your tent. You now have under your care a man who is looking to help others around him. The world knows all the good that he has done before coming to your home, and I can assume the good that he has done during his stay with you. I leave you to the care and responsibilities and to demonstrate that you can do good to this fragile old man. Free him would bring favorable effects on you and would be known worldwide. As a citizen who has been living among you for 44 years, I pray not only for my husband, but for you too that you and your loved ones can still live in peace in your country up till the day of joy. Peace be with you. Oh my, when I, when I saw that video, and you can go online and watch that video, I was weeping to think of the suffering of this family. Uh, they have adult children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. One more story. Rami Ayad. Some of you were here last November when Pastor uh, Hanna Massad was here, and he also told the story of Rami. Rami is only 31 years old. He was working in a Christian bookstore, the only Christian bookstore in, in the Gaza Strip. And there were Muslim extremists who, who kept taunting him and, and telling him he, he needed to renounce Christianity and, and to become a Muslim. And, and he was warned, if you, if you don't convert, we're going to kill you. And that's exactly what they, they did. If you show the next slide. Uh, Rami was killed uh, because of his faith, because of his ministry of the gospel. And this is his wife, Pauline, their son, George, and then their one daughter, Shema, and they have another daughter, Wiesam. The one daughter was born after uh, Pauline was pregnant when, uh, when Rami was killed. And uh, in the 2018 Bridgeway Israel trip, we had a chance to hear Pauline tell her story. And, uh, and then we had an opportunity to pray over there, the family. I, uh, I keep in touch with, with Pauline, and I, I sent her a message yesterday and said I, I would be telling her husband's story and that we'll be thinking of her and praying for her. And this morning I got a Facebook message back from her. She said, thank you for sharing Romney's story. I hope it is an encouragement for the church to see that Jesus is worth it. Jesus is worth it. She's a single mother now, raising three children because of the persecution of the church. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, the stories of persecution could go on and on and on and on. I mean, there are just so many stories now that are happening all around the world. One of the key themes in the scriptures is the preparation for persecution and encouragement in persecution. Jesus was very clear about persecution. He, he said, in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. In John chapter 15, we read, Jesus said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. And the other New Testament writers, you know, are addressing the subject of persecution. The, the writers of the New Testament made persecution, preparation for it, encouragement in it, a, uh, a key theme in their, in their teaching. The Greek word translated persecute, dioko, 
It was used 44 times in the, in the New Testament. That means to make, to run, or flee, to run swiftly, to catch something or uh, someone or something, to harass, to trouble, to molest. Nine times it's used in the book of Acts. Obviously, we know of the persecution of, the, uh, of Peter and Paul and the other disciples. Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, the eighth beatitude, was in preparation for the apostles and the new believers and the church and for us. He was thinking of what would happen, and, and we then read about what happens. Certainly Jesus' death, and then we read about James who was put to death by the sword, and Stephen who was stoned to death, and Peter who was crucified upside down, and John who was exiled to an island in Patmos and died as a prisoner. And the early church writers tell us that all of the, the apostles were martyrs and faced intense persecution. So is that is that beatitude, the eighth beatitude, relevant for today? You bet it is. You bet it is. Not only around the world, but in some of the persecution that you and I experience he here, even though it's nothing like what's happening in uh, North Korea. So w what are our next steps? What are our next steps? I mean... We hear about this and we say, well, you know, what does that have, how, how do I relate to that? I, I believe the, the uh, first key next step for you and for me is to be informed, to be informed. I, I think a lot of times we just don't know. We just don't know what's happening around the world. We don't know what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. There are, there are uh, organizations that are totally focused on the persecuted church. One of them is Open Doors. Another one of them is Voice of the Martyrs. I asked them if they would send us some literature this morning. And if you want to be informed, the best thing you could do is to, uh, you know, this comes out quarterly, this comes out monthly, but is to, uh, to receive this magazine and to read and find out about what's happening to our brothers and sisters around the world. My wife will be out at the table after the service, and if you, we, we don't have enough for you to take both of them. If uh, you want to take one of them with you as you leave, that would be uh, fantastic for you to become informed about the, the plight of these 245 million people who are being persecuted for their faith. We also have Pastor Hannes, uh, he didn't have a magazine, but we have a sheet out there where you can sign up for his mailing list as well. But be informed is a, a very critical thing. Uh, now, nowadays, maybe you don't want to uh, read it in a magazine if you go to the next slide. There are also uh, Mission Network News. I, I get it on, uh, you know, in my inbox and uh, they're always telling stories. In fact, the whole story of Asia Bibi was recently on there. And then Open Doors, you can read the magazines online as well as Voice of the Martyrs. And uh, there are online sites to be informed. I believe that we need to be informed, right? We need to know. We need to know. The second thing is to uh, be faithful in prayer for the persecuted church. From Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 5, it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with the approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handed him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for a public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison. But the church, what? Was earnestly praying for him. The church was earnestly praying for him. It, is that speak about you and me? Are, are we earnestly praying for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world? I think one of the problems is, is that we don't know the names. I gave you some names today. We don't know the names, and so it's, easy, it's harder to just say, Lord, be with the 50,000 Christians who are held in prison in North Korea. 
but we need to be people who pray, even though we don't know their names, to, to lift up these brothers and sisters in prayer. We read Jesus' words, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Praying for courage and boldness and faithfulness and steadfastness and praying for justice like Asia Bibi finally received and praying for the release of those who are held in captivity. And pray for women who are most vulnerable, uh, who are often kept in private, covered, easily abused without any kind of recourse, but praying. And for me, over the years, I, I've always had particular you know, people or countries that I, I'm focused to pray for. And I, I invite you to become one who faithfully prays for, uh, for our persecuted brothers and sisters. And not only prays, but perhaps as, as God moves you to give. Uh, on that Israel trip to uh, where we met with Pauline, one of those was so stirred by her testimony, who was a part of that group, and gave a large gift to support Pauline and uh, as she's raising her, her children alone. But to be people who want to support those who are uh, taking care of imprisoned believers. Then the third thing is be motivated and inspired by the persecuted church, by our persecuted brothers and sisters. And when you suffer, think that there are other people who are suffering around the world. Keep them in mind in the midst of, you know, our daily lives. When you're tempted to be silent, as Pastor Joseph spoke of last week, or to shrink back, Remember these brothers and sisters who are bold and courageous, willing to die for their faith and desire the kingdom of heaven more than we desire the things of this earth, desiring the things of Jesus more than we desire the rewards of this world, keeping our eyes on that final goal that one day we'll be with the Lord. I've been very challenged by this quote by uh, Pastor John Piper. If you don't feel strong desires for the manifestation of the glory of God, it's not because you have drunk deeply and are satisfied. It's because you have nibbled so long at the table of the world that your soul is stuffed with small things and there is no room for the great May we make room in our hearts for the great things of our sacrifice for the kingdom of God. You know, in the churning places of our lives with marriage and parenting, singleness, addictions, health and family issues, money and work challenges, remember Jesus' call, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the, are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. That we might seek his kingdom daily in, in our lives. May we be prepared to sacrifice. And hear the words of Jesus, if anyone would come after me. Let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. Blessed are the persecuted, those who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Would you join me as we pray? Sovereign God, we, we worship you today. And we know that you care for all of those suffering in your name. We pray for uh, Asia Bibi as she adjusts to life after prison in Canada. Unify her family and protect her, Lord. We, we pray for Pauline and George and Wiesam and Shama. And, uh, Lord, protect this family. Uh, provide for them, Lord. Uh, meet them in their need. And we thank you for her testimony of the fact that it was worth it, Lord, to suffer for, for your sake, Jesus. And Lord, we, uh, we pray for 
Kenneth, that he would be released and reunited with his family. And we pray for those believers in North Korea who experience the most amount of severity of persecution. And God, for, forgive us for uh, being so consumed with the rewards of this world that we forget the kingdom of heaven. And Lord, thank you for every opportunity to come together as believers and to be reminded of your call on our lives. Help us to be bold and willing to sacrifice and to not be silent. And we thank you for the example of our suffering brothers and sisters. Grow your church and your kingdom through your suffering servants. And we pray this all in your strong and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.